Grace and peace be unto you. This is your brother Yehuda Ben Isaiah, and I decided to come back again with another lesson titled No More Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdoms, Part 2. No More Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, Part 2. And the reason why is because after I made a video the first time, you still have naysayers out there, and they say that we still have a northern kingdom, southern kingdom, which is comical to me because I brought out all those scriptures in part one, and we still have those that say we still have a northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Despite what the Bible says, or what the Most High says, or what Christ says, so now I want to go back inside the book of Acts. This is again titled No More Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, Part 2. So with that being said, let's go back inside now. And we're going to pick this up at the book of Acts. And this is just before Christ ascended to heaven. Okay, just before he ascended to heaven. So let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 6, and it says here, it says, And the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, okay, to whom also showed himself alive after his passion by many, okay, infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. So it says after his resurrection, the Messiah was seen 40 days among those who believed on him 40 days before he ascended to heaven. And it says, and, this, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, meaning the Messiah, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. Christ says, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, these are the words of the Messiah. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So right here, Christ is telling his followers, right, that seen him for 40 days after the resurrection, that he said that John baptized you with, with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay? And he says, in many days hence. Verse 6. And when they therefore were come together, meaning all his followers, they asked him, saying, Lord, they said, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Again, his followers said to the Messiah, before he ascended to heaven, they said, will die at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. They asked the Messiah one more time. They said, will die at this time restore, or restore again the kingdom of Israel? So before Christ ascended to heaven, his followers asked him, saying, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Showing you that during the time of Christ and the Roman or the Roman Empire, there were no more northern, northern kingdom or southern kingdom. No more. No more. His followers just asked Christ one more time, the book of Acts 
chapter 1, verse 6. They said, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Will you now, before you ascend to heaven, will you now restore the kingdom of Israel? So if these Jews, these black Jews is asking the Messiah before he, before he ascended to heaven, will you now restore the kingdom? How is there a northern kingdom, southern kingdom? They understood in their time that there were no more northern kingdom or, or southern kingdoms. They asked Christ, will you at this time Restore the kingdom of Israel before you ascend to heaven. Let's see what the Messiah says, verse 7. And he says, Christ says, It is not for you to know. It is not for you to know. The times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. So these Jews, before Christ ascended to heaven, they asked him, saying, Will you now restore the kingdom of heaven? Will you now restore the kingdom of heaven? How is there, how is, how is it that some of you are still saying we have a northern kingdom, southern kingdom? When the Jews understood in this particular time, in, they, in their time, during the time of the Messiah, there were no more northern kingdom, southern kingdoms. And Rome was in power. So now, Let's go to the book of Ezra. The Jews asked the Messiah, will you at this time restore the kingdom of heaven? They understood that there were no more, no more northern kingdoms and southern kingdoms. They understood this here. But you have some of, the, some of these dumb Negroes That still want to say we have a northern kingdom, southern kingdom. So now let's go to the book of Ezra chapter 1 and read verse 1. Right? The book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. It says here. It says now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of, the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, right? And put it also in writing, right? And put it in writing. Let's jump over to verse eight. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Meredith, the treasurer, and numbered them, into Shezbazar, the prince of Judah. Shezbazar, the prince of Judah. So right here, this man named Shezbazar, he was the first governor of Judah. The first prince and he was made the first governor of Judah. Shezbazar, after the captivity. So now I want to jump over to the book of Ezra, chapter 5, and verse 14, all right? Verse 14, it says here, And the vessels also of the gold, of the silver of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that, were, that was in Jerusalem, and brought them into the temple of Babylon, those did Cyrus, the king, take out of the temple, it says, Babylon, and they were delivered unto one, whose name was Shezbazar, whom he had made governor. 
So the king of Persia, Cyrus, made, he made Shabazzar, who was a Jew, the first governor after the captivity. After the return, he made him the first governor. Okay, the first governor of Judea. No more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. Again, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6, they asked Christ, they said, will, will, will when you restore the kingdom? When will you, or, or will you now restore the kingdom? Will you now restore the kingdom of God? Showing you, they, they understood that it was no more northern kingdom, southern kingdom, right? So it says that in the book of Ezra 5 and 14, that Shez Barzar was made the first governor, a Jew. The king of Persia pointed him to be the first governor of Judea or that region. He was the first governor after the captivity. Okay, no more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. Governor, governors are not kings and queens. Okay, now let's go to Ezra 6. Let's skip over to, to the next chapter here, right? Ezra 6 and 14, right? The book of Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14, it says here, and the elders of the Jews, they built it, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Edu, or I do. So during, during the, the temple, the second temple, or while it was being rebuilt, the two main prophets were Haggai and Zechariah. Haggai and Zechariah, right? So again, it says, and the elders of the Jews, they built it and they prospered. Through the prophesying of Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Edu, or I do. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Okay, so I'm just showing you guys that during that time when it was rebuilt in the second temple, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah. They were the prophets during that time, okay? Haggai and Zechariah. So now let's go to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai. The book of Haggai is the last book in the, what we call the Old Testament, right? Let's go to the book of Haggai. Haggai and Zechariah, they were the two prophets during the... During the... Um, the building of the second temple. And actually, no, no, Malachi is the last book. I'm sorry. But I want to go to the book of Haggai. If I can get there, the book of Haggai. Um, when I get there, I'm going to chapter, chapter one. So again, it says that Haggai and Zechariah, they were the main prophets during the time or while the second temple were being rebuilt. So this is the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 1. It says here, And the people urged to build a temple. That's the subtitle. It says, In the, in the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shel Sheltiel, governor of Judah. Okay, the governor of Judah. And Joshua, the son of Joshdek, the high priest, saying. So at this time here, the second governor was Zerubbabel. The first governor was Shebazar, or Sheb Shebazar. And the second governor was Zerubbabel. He was the second governor. Okay, he was the second governor after the captivity. Right? Now, let's go to Haggai, chapter 2, verse 21. I'm still in the book of Haggai, 
Verse 21, chapter 2, verse 21, it says, in fact, let's start at verse 20. It says, and again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, verse 21, speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Zerubbabel was the second governor. Shebazar was the first governor. Two governors so far after the captivity. No more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. The Jews asked the Messiah before he ascended to heaven, he said, or oh, they said, will you now at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They understood they had no more northern kingdom, southern kingdom. So now let's go to the book of Nehemiah, All right? Nehemiah, let's go to chapter 5 and read verse 12. Nehemiah 5 and 12, All right? No more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. Nehemiah 5 and 12, it says here, And then said they, We will restore them and will require nothing of them, so we will do as thy said. And then I called the priest, I called the priest, and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. So it says that Nehemiah called the priest, the Levitical priest, that they should do according to this promise, right? Let's skip down to verse 14 and read verse 14. In fact, let's read verse 13 through 15. And it says here, Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise, right? Even thus he or be he shaken out and emptied and all the congregation said amen and praised the Lord and the people did according to the, this promise, right? Verse 14, moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor, okay, their governor, so now Nehemiah, the third governor, Shezbazar, first governor, Zerubbabel, second governor, Nehemiah, third governor, Nehemiah also was a governor. A lot of people don't know that. Nehemiah was a governor of the nation when they returned from the captivity. Three governors, no king, no northern kingdom, no southern kingdom. Let me clip, clip verse 14 one more time here. It says, moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 12th or 20th year, even unto the 2 and 30th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. Okay? Three governors. Three. No northern kingdom or southern kingdom. Three Governors after the captivity. Three governors. Shezbazar, Zerubbabel, Nehemiah. So far, three governors. So now, I want to go to the book of Zechariah. Let's flip over to the prophet Zechariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Let's go to the prophet, the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, and I'm going to start at verse 9. It says here, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Now, who is Zechariah speaking of right here? So far, we had three governors. 
after the return from Persia, the Persian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, after the return and they rebuilt the second temple led by Zerubbabel, the first governor was appointed Shebazar or Shezbazar, the second governor, Zerubbabel, the third governor, Nehemiah. But right here, Zechariah says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. So now we have a king. Now we have a king. No kingdom, though. But we have a king. Because, because Christ says, it's, it's not for you to know when I will set up the kingdom. Before he ascended to heaven. They asked him, they said, will you now set up or restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it's not for you to know. So Christ killed that lie right there. The Jews who asked that question, they killed that lie. They said, will you now restore the kingdom of Israel to the people? Will you now restore the kingdom? Thy king cometh unto thee. He is, he is just and having salvation and lowly. He is lowly and riding upon an ass, a donkey, and upon a coat and the foal of an ass. The foal of an ass. The Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach. Now we have a king. Now we have a king. When he was born. The three wise men said, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Where is he? He's the king. But he told the people, it's not for you to know when I will set up the kingdom. So that should kill all the arguments right there. Okay? That should kill all the arg arguments right there. Let's go back again one more time. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat and foal of an ass. Of an ass. Now we have a king. We had three govern governors after the captivity. Many, many, many years later, Christ was born king of the Jews. But Christ told the people, it's not for you to know when I will set up the kingdom. So now, let's go back to the book of Acts one more time. So Zechariah seeing the vision of the Messiah coming as the king. It says, thy king cometh unto thee, riding upon a donkey or an ass. Now let's go back to the book of Isaiah. I'm sorry, the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> 1. The book of Acts, chapter 1. Let's go back. Right? Let's go back. Let's start at verse 4. These are the people assembled together before Christ ascended to heaven. Let's go back one more time. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, Christ with the people, all his followers, all his believers and his apostles, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, so they can go out and teach the Gospels, which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. These are the words of the Messiah. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And not many days hence. Okay, not many days hence. Verse 6. And when they, all the people, including the apostles, were come together, they asked the Messiah, saying, Lord, wilt die at this time? Restore again the kingdom of Israel. 
Will now doubt? Will you now, at this time, before you ascend, will you now restore the kingdom of Israel? Because they thought they thought that Christ was coming back to restore the kingdom of Israel during the Roman occupation or the Roman Empire. That's what they thought. They did not realize that he did not come to restore the kingdom the first time. He's going to do that the second time. His second return. When he returned his second time, that is when he's going to restore the kingdom. When he returns the second time. Okay? And Christ told the people. They said, will you now restore the kingdom of Israel? They understood. Our ancestors, they understood. They got it. They knew. They knew there were no northern kingdom, southern kingdom. During that time, how could it be? They were occupied by the Romans. They had no king. They had no king. The first king after the captivity was Sherebazar. The second, I'm sorry, the governor, the governor Sherebazar. The second governor, Zerubbabel. The third governor, um, Nehemiah. But no king. They understood this. How is it that you cannot understand? How is it? Will you now restore the kingdom of heaven? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Will you now restore the kingdom of Israel? They asked the Messiah. And he said, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, okay, the seasons, which the Father has put in his own power. He said, It is not for you to know when I will restore the kingdom. It's not for you to know. So now, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. One more chapter. One more. The book of Ezekiel. Let's flip over to like chapter... Um, chapter 39. Now let's see the future. What's going to happen in the future when Christ returns the second time? Let's see what he's going to do. He's going to restore the kingdom the second time. He's going to bring back all 12 tribes from the captivity. When he returned. Okay, that's how we know also that all 12 tribes are Negroes. Because only the Negroes were scattered. So it says, and this is after the God made God war. This is a future prophecy, right? A future prophecy after the God made God war, right? Let's start at verse 21. Ezekiel 39, verse 21, it says, and this is after the God made God war, after they cleaned up the land and buried the dead, etc. It says, and I will set my glory among the heathen. These are the words of the Father, of the, of the, Father, the Most High. And all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. Verse 22. So the house of Israel shall know. That I am the Lord their God from that day forward. From that day forward. Why? Because many people don't know. They don't know that they are the children of God. But you have these, these morons in these camps. They tell, they're telling you and I that the Mexicans and the uh, Hispanics are God's peoples. So it says in verse 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. They trespassed against me. Who went into captivity? The last captivities during the, um, the Atlantic slave trade and the sub-Saharan slave trade. Only the Negroes. This prophecy fits only the Negroes. Right? And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore, I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So they fell they all by the sword. Verse 24, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them. And I hid my face from them. It said that, that God hid his face from our ancestors or, or our peoples. All right. It says verse 25. And therefore, thus says the Lord God, 
Now, now will I, uh, he said, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, meaning all 12 tribes, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. So God says now, after the God made God war, which is a future prophecy, he says now I will bring back the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house. Not just the tribe of Judah, Benjamin and Levi, as these Negroes in these camps are teaching you. They're teaching you only the niggas went into captivity according to them. So God changed his mind, huh? According to the curses. When he said that all 12 tribes will go on cargo ships and be, and be shipped uh, through all the nations on the earth, just as Christ said in the book of Luke. Just as the Messiah said in the book of Luke. So God said, you know what? I'm going to give the northern kingdom, the quote-unquote so-called fake northern kingdom, a pass. According to these camps, I'm going to give them a pass. I'm going to give the, the white, bright, light-skinned, um, different phenotype, straight hair, northern kingdom, a pass, and I'm going to send all the niggas into captivity. Only the niggas I'm sending to captivity. I'm going to give them white people a pass. That's what these camps are telling you. Send the niggas into captivity. Let them go on cargo ships. But let's give the northern kingdom a pass. Even though they all committed iniquities. Let's give them a pass. You see, because they, their skin is not black. They don't have the Negro features or, or, the, or the nappy willy hair. So let's give uh, the northern kingdom a pass. Because they white skin and they look different. Let's give them a pass and send the niggas into captivity. Let's let the northern kingdom slide. Same curses. But no, God said, I'm going to let the niggas go into captivity. Only, only the niggas. Only, only the Negroes. I'm sending the Negroes into captivity. I'm giving everybody else a pass. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, according to these, these uh, satanic camps, only the niggas going into captivity. That's what these camps are telling you. But right here, after the God made God war, Christ himself is going to return all 12 tribes from the captivity. According to the words of Moses, Moshe, and the Most High. God is not a liar. These niggas in these camps, they liars. God is not a liar, though. He's not a liar. Let the niggas go into captivity. Give the, give the northern kingdom a pass. They look different. They white skin. They got a, their nice white skin and a straight, the straight goat horse hair. Let's give them a pass. Let's send only, only the Negroes into captivity. Let's let the niggas go into captivity only. That's what God said, huh? God said, I'm going to just send the niggas into captivity. Those who look like the Messiah. His description. Let's send them to captivity instead. Let's give the northern kingdom. Let's give them a pass. That's what these camps are telling you. Let's continue to read. One more time. And the heathen shall... Know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity and their trespass against me. Therefore, I hid my face from them. Verse 24. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have done unto them, said the Most High. And I hid my face from them. Verse 25. Therefore, thus says the Lord, now will I again, or now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. Did God just say the whole house? When, when the Messiah returns all 12 tribes, did he just say the whole house went into captivity? The last captivity? The whole house. 
the Atlantic slave trade, self-Saharan slave trade, the whole house. Isn't it wonderful? Only the Negroes went to captivity. Isn't it wonderful? But yet, these niggas in these camps are telling you that only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi went to captivity. But all 12 tribes went to captivity on cargo ships among all the nations on the earth. When those cargo ships came over to the Americas, the Caribbean islands, you had a mixture on those ships. You had Issachar on those ships. You may have a guy from some Judahites on those ships, Benjamites, Naphtali on the same ships, all mixed together. You could have somebody from Zebulon sitting beside somebody from Levi, somebody from Issachar sitting beside somebody from Asher on the same ships. Nobody knows what tribe they're from. Let's continue. Verse 26, And after that they have borne their shame, says the Most High, and all their transgressions whereby they have trespassed against me. And when they dwelt safely in their land, as we dwell in safely in our land, and none made them afraid, verse 27, And when I have brought them again from the people, from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands. Of their enemies' lands. And and it says, and I'm sanctified, okay, sanctified in them in the sight of, of many nations. You see that? Verse 28. And then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. Future prophecy. Which God said they would know then. I am the Lord that caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But remember. No more northern kingdom, southern kingdom. They asked Christ. When will you restore the, or will you now restore the kingdom of heaven? He says not for you to know. Let's continue to read now. Let's see what's going to happen. Christ is going to return all 12 tribes from the captivity, as he, as is mentioned in the book of Luke, right? Will you now restore the kingdom uh, to Israel? Christ says, it's not for you to know. The last verse, Ezekiel 39 and 28. One more time. In fact, verse 28 and verse 29. And then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them into their own land and, and have left none of them any more there. God says when Christ returned all 12 tribes from the captivity, he is not going to leave nobody in no more lands. All Israel will be brought back to the Messiah. All Israel. That is when he's going to set up his new kingdom. But as, at this particular time, no more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. Last verse, verse 29. God says, neither will I, I hide my face anymore from them. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says the Lord God, Selah. But there you have it. Part two. No more northern kingdom. No more southern kingdom. All 12 tribes, Negro. All 12 tribes will be returned by the Messiah. After the God made God war, which is a future prophecy, which is also mentioned in the book of Revelations. After the God made God war, Christ is going to return all 12 tribes. God says the whole house from the captivity, the last captivities, the sub-Saharan slave trade from the East African coast and the West African coast. All 12 tribes went into uh, Africa. All 12. And was living among each other. And was caught on both sides of the continent of Africa and sent into captivity among all the nations on the earth of the earth. And it started, it started also 
during the Roman era. They started taking slaves during the Roman era. All the way up to the sub-Saharan slave trade and the Atlantic slave trade. Worldwide, all 12 tribes went on ships. But, again, no more northern kingdom. And no more southern kingdom. 